Boris Johnson will have to work closely with Brussels in order to deliver on his Brexit promises. So what did Boris say during his campaign? Well, first, he says he's going to renegotiate Theresa May's Brexit deal. A tough ask, as several European leaders have made it clear that renegotiation is not on the agenda. The border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland is next on the agenda. The Irish backstop, as it's become known, is one of the most contentious parts of the Brexit process. Boris says he wants to throw out the EU's proposed backstop plan entirely. And of course, he has set a hard Brexit deadline, promising that Britain will leave on October the 31st with or without a deal. Well, our correspondent Jack Parrick joins us from Brussels for more on the EU's reaction to Boris Johnson's win. Well, good evening to you there, Jack. Uh, so Boris has made these promises. We've just been listening to them now, but he's going to come face to face with Ursula von der Leyen, the new Commission president who will be taking, uh, taking her, her job up just after that October 31st Brexit deadline. But what do we know now about her negotiating standpoint? Well, we know that Ursula von der Leyen has said as part of her process to become selected the European Commission president-elect that she would indeed be in favour of granting the UK a future extension to Brexit should, there be, should that be required, should it be necessary to avoid no deal specifically. Now, Boris Johnson says that's not necessary, uh, that he is sort of do or die on this October 31st deadline for the UK to leave the European Union as it is at the moment on that Halloween date. Now, you saw in London with Victoria there a lot of jubilations and sort of parties going on. That is not going on here in Brussels. They're concerned about Boris Johnson. They are worried that he's going to push uh, the edge, push the UK to the edge of a Brexit no deal. We heard Franz Timmermans, the first vice president of the European Commission, who will continue a very prominent role in the European Commission, uh, in the next European Commission, saying that it would be a tragedy for both the UK and the European Union if the UK leaves without a deal on October the 31st. A tragedy for both sides, but the EU has been prepared for this eventuality, isn't it? Yeah, there's been a series of measures that the EU's put in. They say that they're ready for no deal, but nobody wants that. We've seen, for instance, the Irish uh, uh, Deputy Prime Minister Simon Coveney saying that they're ready to work constructively with the government of the United Kingdom. I've been speaking to MEPs in the European Parliament today, some of them saying, listen, this guy is not someone that we can trust. He flip-flops on his ideologies, on his permissions. We didn't really know whether he was pro-Brexit before the vote for a long time, right until the end, until the campaign campaigning for the Brexit referendum started, but a lot of them saying, listen, we have to work with the UK government to avoid a no deal scenario. Important to note that Michel Barnier, the UK's chief Brexit negotiator, has tweeted to say that they're prepared to work with the UK to look at the UK's future re relationship with the European Union, to try to sort that out, to avoid the necessity of the backstop ever being enacted. But we can't so read that as the, the, an idea that Boris will be able to get a renegotiation of the withdrawal agreement that was signed off this massive, nearly 600-page document from an EU standpoint, leaders, national capitals, and here in Brussels, that's not possible. Okay, well, thanks so much, Jack Parrick there from Brussels.